on this episode low risk programming this is the part where we might break stuff s tier brain confidence i'm smart also are we sure we still talk about video games and sometimes it bursts and sometimes it spreads mm. hi everybody this is christian from laser Devs academy welcome to another episode of uh, an advanced shmup tutorial episode 75 it is a bit late my voice is a little bit strained we are soldering on because today is, mm, actually there's going to be some really exciting stuff today happening we're going to expand tremendous amount of expansion on our enemy system that's just this thing that's coming up today i want to be able to link enemies to the ground i want to Mess around a little bit with the collision of the enemies. Have some options on the collision stuff. I'm gonna explain in a second. And also I want to lay down the ground, not completely, but already start a little bit on stuff like uh, bullet canceling. Let us first go to N edit. The the N edit, so easily forgotten. The humble N edit. Okay, so here is where we can um, define some properties of enemies and I wanted to introduce new properties of enemies. First of all, I wanted to introduce maybe a new property that is all about whether this is a ground enemy or an air enemy. And this is going to be zero for, for air enemy and one for ground enemy. Hmm, let me think. One for ground enemy. Yes, one for ground enemy, two for air enemy. And we're going to see in a second why. All right, so something like, for example, this. I'm not sure which enemy this is because I haven't still expanded my, <laughs> I haven't expanded my UI for it. It's it's mm, it's gonna be okay. So this is gonna be enemy. This these are gonna be uh, uh uh no, this is gonna be air, air enemy. So I want to set it to two. Two is air enemy. And then something I want to set is I want to have a bit of a control over what can hit an enemy. I'm smart. I'm already thinking ahead a little bit. I'm already thinking about, um, for example, there might be, in the future, we might have a boss fight, and that boss fight uh, is going to be, be, we planned this a little bit ahead, right? You, you see an UFO on the ground, and that UFO slowly takes off, and then you can fight it, right? Which means, for a while, that UFO won't be will be invulnerable. You cannot shoot it for a while. And then only after a while you can actually start shooting it. So I want to be able to control um, collision of things a little bit. And this is kind of simple stuff. I just want to maybe maybe make sure that control whether something can get hit by the player ship and if something get, can, get, can get hit by bullets. If there, I'm gonna, I want to be able to turn off collision detection on those things. Right, so in, in this case, let's say, how are we going to do this? I don't know, let's just, let's just set it to zero and zero means that it's hit by, can be hit by everything. And then one means that it can't be hit by uh, bullets, but it can be hit by the ship. And then two is means it can't be hit by the ship and it can't be hit by the bullets. Something like this, I don't know. Yeah, maybe something like this. And then I want to have another thing that is controls whether this is a bullet canceling kind of enemy. If I shoot it down, do I want to delete all of the bullets that belong to that enemy? That's also, I want to already introduce kind of like some data that tracks, keep tracks of that. Um, we're going to figure out the details in a second, but for now, I just want to make sure that um, the columns here are correctly labeled because we want to, you know, make sure that everything's nice in order. And then we want to fill out the data for or the existing enemies so nothing breaks as we continue on. Right, so let's see. Did we did we save this? Yeah, we saved this. Okay, so where are the where are the there we go. That's the captions, that's what we wanted. So let's go GR grid ground G and D. That's that's ground. <laughs> then collision and then can CNC cancel. Seems, seems good, seems good. Maybe the, this is not just gonna be canceling, but maybe some, and maybe be able to encode some other stuff. And by the way, um, these are not a lot of states. And technically we could encode them like into like a single number and do like bitwise operators and so forth. But you know what? 
this is going to be easier for me to read. And I don't think we're going to have that much enemies that, you know, saving a bunch of um, characters will make a big deal, right? So I'd rather make it so that it's easy for me to read in a table rather than encoding it in some kind of like fancy and smart way and then using a bunch of tokens to encode, decode it in a fan, fancy smart way. However, I'm also, this is a bit of an excuse because I'm not really good at bitwise operation. <laughs> operators so if anybody comments has like a really cool and smooth and token efficient suggestion how to pull this off with uh, bitwise operators post it in the comment section and we're gonna take a look at it later on okay so let's see how this works perfect it works perfect our system is we set up everything so our system is already prepared for this uh, eventuality and now i just want to like fill out the data here how much data is it is it here how much 18 it's fine we can do it by hand Now I want to show you this because I'm keeping track of all these things in my little cheat sheet so I don't forget it when I'm in the middle of the code somewhere so I don't forget these kind of things and I want to make sure that this stuff isn't... Actually, why I already have it here for some... Oh no, that's collision detection. Okay, good. Um, right, so let's, let's add uh, those new additions here. So this is ground, ground, uh, one, ground, two, air, right? Something like this. Seven, a collision. Uh, I haven't decided on how the collision works yet. We're gonna figure this in a second. And then eight is um, bullet canceling. Uh, zero, no, one, yes. But again, this is something that maybe we're gonna do later. Uh, the collision, I'm not sure about. Let me think about this. Okay, as I looked up some notes, um, I, I already did some similar system before, and I think this is here is a solution that might work. So um, zero means no bullets, so bullets won't hit that the thing. It will just fly fly past it. We won't even interact with the stink. Meaning uh, one means no ship. A ship, ship, ship. So the player ship will just also phase through, and two is normal, like this. And you already notice what happened here is when we have ground enemies, all that we re need to do, uh, well, we need to actually do two things. We need to set them to ground, but we also want to make sure that the ship doesn't collide with them. Also, the way I'm solving this is if the bullets are not hitting the thing, then also the player ship is not hitting the thing. Like, there won't be a situation where the bullets are not hitting the thing, but the player ship can still be damaged by it. That makes no sense to me. All right, so let us try to uh, encode this properly now. So it's most of the time ground, like the ground. It's not really ground. It's actually, I'm going to explain in a second. Um, most of the time it's set to two, so our, most of these are air enemies. I'm going to find out which is the ground enemy. It's going to be 14 and 15. So these are the two ground enemies. Yes, yes, yes. These are ground enemies. And this is a yellow shooter and this is the chunker. Okay, so these we're going to set to one. And then here the collision, uh, we set two is normal, right? So we want to set every one of those to two, except the ground enemies here with these ground enemies, we're going to set those to one, one. And then we kind of like double encoding things like ground enemy means we have to change two values. Um, I'm going to explain in a second why. And then here, I think this last enemy, this like this big enemy, I'm going to set that to bullet cancelling enemy, right? So this is the big, uh, big chunky enemy that com comes down. That's going to be the bullet cancelling enemy. So that's why I'm setting bullet cancelling to one here. Already setting up some stuff. Okay. Uh, export this bad boy. Cool. Now, if you run this, it's a bit loud on for, for my side. If you run this, uh, it's not breaking which is good, which means it's backwards compatible. Um, but now we want to kind of start making sure that these things actually do something because right now they're not doing anything. Right, so actually what we want to do is we want to go to brain edit. We have the position go to, by the way. Uh, how do I fire multiple bullets? <laughs> let's, let me put this on my two big, mm, that's, that's gonna be a big long-term to-do list. But for now, I want to figure out this ground enemy. So there is actually, again, there's multiple aspects of the ground enemy aspect of the thing, right? Uh, ground enemies have move with the background. 
ground and means move with the background. So already we have to also think already think about okay moving with background. This is one aspect of the ground enemies. Number one. Number two, ground enemies are drawn underneath air enemies. Air enemies should fly over ground enemies. The player ship flies over above anything ever because we draw it as one of the last things. But um, some enemies are drawn out on top of other enemies, and it really depends on the order of things and how they spawn, right? But now we always want the ground enemies to be underneath the air enemies. So, order of things, uh, drawing order. And then finally, the collision. We said ground enemies do not collide with the player ship. Okay, so let me first tackle this this part where it's moving with the background. Let's just do this part first. And I'm here in brain edit because I want to be able to, it's an easy way to see this in brain edit, right? So here, this guy here, this is like a very simple enemy here right now. And I have to move it at this speed at 0 0.2 speed downward. So it, it looks as if it's on the ground, right? And I don't want I don't want that. I want to be able to say like this, zero zero, and I want it to be still moving downwards. Right. So the, how do we do this? Uh, let's go with the enemy here. Yes, yes, yes. And then basically, I mean, hmm, we have like the <laughs> this part will break this. Let's not think about this too much. It's fine. Um, Right, okay, so here's where we're actually moving the enemy. And now we want to basically have like a ground enemy flag that tells us if the enemy is moving with the background, right? So let's see. Uh, so now we have to think about creating enemies. Uh, spawn enemy, there we go, spawn n. Mm -hmm. So now we need to have like some properties to the way we spawn enemies, okay? Uh, let's put it right here at the collision detection because that's kind of like belongs to you. Let's call this ground. No, actually, let's let's reveal why uh, air enemies are are two and ground enemies are one. That is going to be a layer. We're going to have two layers of enemies. We're going to draw first uh, layer number one. That's going to be ground enemies, and then layer number two. That's going to be air enemies. I want to have two layers. Okay, so let's see. That's what's um, entry number six was layer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then let's call it call mask. No, 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 actually call bull. No, call shot equals N seven uh, greater than zero and call ship and seven greater than one. Okay, so we have like this property layer, which is just like the layer which, which it is on, and just by default, everything that's on layer number one is gonna be moving with the background. We're just gonna declare it like this. Um, and we're already setting this up for later on for the drawing order. And then second thing is like we have like this these two Boolean basically, these two Boolean properties, which is if it's colliding with a shot and if it's colliding with a ship. We're not gonna need this in the brain editor, but we do maybe need this later on, so I already set it up. Okay, so let us now look for this layer and depending on where on which layer we're on, we're gonna move this, uh, this ship a little bit differently. So let's go right, so here, right? We're gonna go e dot y plus 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 equals e dot lay, layer equals one and zero point two or zero like this, right? So if, if the ship is on layer one, we're gonna keep moving it by 0 0.2 downwards. Um, otherwise, we're just not gonna add anything to. Um, we could we could go like this, like this. Is that is that more efficient? So this is 312, and without this. 
yeah, we're saving one token like this. We're totally going for it. Okay, something like this. Uh, let's try this. These look cool. Yes! <laughs> and the beauty of the thing is that it also now works in the schedule editor because, you know, we just like, we just exporting the trails anyway, right? So now in the schedule editor, we will see the enemies, brown enemies move correctly now. Now, see, this is the enemy that really fixes that, that, where we can really see the difference. Because now, previously, I had to like do these complicated calculations, get the right speed and the right heading, so it looks as if the enemy is moving sideways and then stops on the street. No longer the case. Now, we can go, like, we can make our life so much easier. Because look, we just need to do like a 0 0.25, right? Something like this. And then we need to figure out a good speed for this. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, uh, yeah, 0 0.2. We want to go 0 0.2. Something like this. Yeah, see? Um, now the heading downwards should be 0 because then it should just stop. Just the same movement that we had previously, but previously we had like this complicated math. Now it's so much easier. And we can make the ground enemies move around in a very controlled fashion. Yes. Now I want to copy all of this stuff to the schedule editor. No, to the to the couch map. So let's do that real quick. Yes, it's working. You totally saw them. You totally saw them. That's good. Uh, let me. We're gonna we're gonna interact with the uh, brown enemies a lot. So let me let me uh, set a scroll value to something where we can actually see the enemies. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's try eight. Whatever. I want to be able to see the ground enemies. Okay, there are ground enemies here. Let me let me put it a little bit higher. I want to appear after the 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 snakes appear that's too late oh because the ground enemies they appear earlier mm, i see i see they appear before the snakes yeah yeah yeah. okay good that's okay that's that's fine okay here and you can see that there's a bit fighting happening right there's they're not quite they're moving a little bit against the background so it, oh, it's a, a little bit but uh, whatever okay so now okay so we have the ground enemies i actually paste in i, I just copied it real quick i paste it paste it in the to-do list from uh, from the brain editor so we have moving the bit of background that's that's finished which was actually also surprising easy it's not perfect but we're not going to obsess about this right now it's, it's broadly speaking works now i want to address this part of the drawing order and that's going to be a little bit oh uh, that's going to be a little bit tough i'm not sure exactly how to do this Basically, I have two ideas. Uh, one is we might have just like two separate enemy uh, uh, arrays. And we're just going to draw first array one and then array two. That would be a good solution. Um, the problem with that is later on when we delete enemies, it's going to be difficult to find out which array an enemy is in. So maybe it's going to be just easier if we're going to go through the same array multiple times. And we're just going to say, like, now draw layer one. It draws all of the enemies and only draws the enemies that are set to layer one. And then we're going to loop through this again and now draw enemies that have layer two. Let's try to do this second part first. By the way, I just want to see, do we have any layering problems here? No, we don't, see, because because the snake goes above those. So maybe we need to set it up a little bit so we have... Hmm, I don't want to destroy this level. Let me do a backup. 
Yeah, shmup sched, that's a schedule. Yeah, 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 okay, sure. Let's do a backup. Right, so yeah, maybe that's that's for the best. So when here we have the three enemies, I'm just gonna delete these. I just don't wanna have the snakes here right now. Oh, see, there is a problem here, and it was a little bit on a bad spot, okay. So the enemies that are spawned later are drawn later. So if something is spawned after, yeah, after these, then they would get drawn on top anyway. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm think, trying to come up with a solution where we don't have to. Oh, you know what? I, I know exactly what, what I'm going to do. So this is drawn. F yeah, so I'm just going to spawn. I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to spawn this guy here. At this position. And I'm just going to move it up. Oops. I'm just going to move it up in time. Right. Uh, yeah, like this. So now, I don't know if this is... Yeah, so see, you can see how the green enemy is now above the red enemy. And what I want to have in the final game is I want to... The green enemy to be uh, drawn underneath the red enemy. Okay, back in the couch map, we're gonna see this effect in action. Okay, so we see the ground enemies here. And here's the ground enemy that spawned on top of an air enemy, and I, I don't want to do that anymore. Okay, so this is just like a pure draw order, um, or the order of things, drawing order of things, right? <laughs> drawing order of things, oh my gosh. Right, so here it is. Here are the enemies. Okay, and then so basically what we're gonna do is something like 4L equals one to two do. Right? And then just like a very simple if E dot layer, laser layer equals is that how it works? If e layer equals L, then like this. It just works. Hey, what can I say? It just works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, this this is cool. This is cool. So ground just the drawing order is fixed. Now we need to fix or need to discuss the collision stuff. Let me let me look up the the, the flags that we created there. So we have call shot and call ship, right? So that's gonna be an update function. So here are shots with enemies. So we're gonna loop through all of the enemies. Do and then we're gonna do like if e dot call oops call shot then and we are only going to do the collision detection on enemies that that are call shots that are, have flagged with call shot um and then ship versus enemies the same the same same idea if e dot call ship and we could I mean, there's a, we could we could wrap it into this if, if statement. That's probably better. If e call shot and okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So that we we don't have as many if statements here. And if, just for clarification, in case you didn't know that, whenever you have an if statement that has a bunch of things that occur that's combined with each other, um, all these things are um, evaluated separately from each other. So in this case, we're gonna first see if something is set as call shot. If it's not set as call shot, once this and comes up, we're just gonna skip everything. We're just gonna make sure, we already know that this is not, this, this can't be true because the first one is not true. So if it's not true already, then it doesn't matter what the others do. So we don't have to do calculate collision detection and so forth. The problem is now we don't have a way. Well, we have a way. We can just see. Yes, see, that was, that was, that was not, no ceiling. But you see, we can fly over those enemies. We cannot fly over those enemies though. But we can fly here. That's good. That's what we wanted. 
Cool. So we now have no collision detection with ground enemies. Now, just to check, I want to make sure I'm going to set the enemies to not collide with the bullets just to see that if this flag works. So you see now they're no longer even collide with, uh, with my own shots. I can fly over them. Everything is peachy. Cool. Let's bring them back to normal again. Okay, so this clears up the ground enemies. We have all of the things that we need to do in order to make better ground enemies. We had ground enemies before, but now they're so much better. And I'm already seeing like maybe we're gonna apply shadows to all the layer two stuff, but that comes up later on. But for now, let me think about some other things. I, I'm thinking about some other things. So I want to go to this pattern editor to do two small things two small things. I want to make sure that we're not going to break anything while adding those two small things, but you're going to see. See, we're not using we're not using burst at all. We're not using burst at all. Um by the way, there's some to do here. Yeah, that's that's what we already have. We keep this assumption around. Okay, so this is something I want to keep around. And then um burst collab into a spread. Okay, so this was something that was supported or that was suggested by the Gecko. Thank you so much for the suggestion, the Gecko. An excellent suggestion that I, I, I kind of love. I kind of love. It's, it's pretty good. So the idea here is that we can use, because if you look at the spread pattern that we have, which is already pretty useful, it has like eight entries, source from to ang, speed, time, and mirror. Um, the mirror is zero for zero for nothing and one for mirror the shots. We could say like mirror is not necessarily mirror if it's it's kind of like type, right? And then uh, it's one for zero for nothing, one for mirror and two for burst. So when we set mirror on like the eighth entry to two, uh, we are not gonna get a spread pattern, uh, like the even spread that we had previously, but now this spread turns into burst. And the reason why we're doing, why we're merging burst and spread is we can save a whole bunch of tokens that way because we don't have to loop through a bunch of patterns twice for the burst pattern and for the spread pattern. We just have one pattern that loops through this, this kind of stuff. And sometimes it bursts and sometimes it spreads. Pretty smart stuff. I have a, some code open up that 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 the gecko had here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna reference this. But let me let me see what the gecko is cooking here. I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna try this. We're gonna keep the burst around, but as you see, this is like 48 tokens. And we, by the way, we're doing stuff here, so let, let's just make sure that we write down how many tokens we have. Two, seven, one, eight. Right. So we have uh, currently two, seven, one, eight, and we are we're hoping to save maybe around 40-ish tokens, that would be pretty sweet. So the idea is that here, when we are looping through all of the bullets in our pattern, right? We're gonna say something like, if P8 equals two, then else. And in this case, that's gonna be the burst. And otherwise, we're gonna do things like this. Otherwise this, now this return pattern is something I'm a bit concerned about. We're gonna think about this in a second, but otherwise something like this. And then here is where we add, adding the, the actual return pattern. Now let me think about this. No, this is good. Yeah, yeah, this absolutely works. This absolutely works. This is spread and this is mirror. Because it actually doesn't really matter when we're adding our particle or our, our P, that our pattern, when we're adding that to the return array. Uh, at the moment where we're doing it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect anything. It's just, we can just add it here at the end of the, the big if statement. This is the big if statement. We prepare our P object. That's the, uh, uh, I think it's an individual bullet in this case. So we're preparing an individual bullet. Uh, we make sure that it has the speed and weight and so forth. And then here we are just adding it. And sometimes the bullet is gonna be a spread bullet. Sometimes the bullet is gonna be a burst bullet. Okay, so now the only thing is let, let's do is here we need to calculate the actual burst stuff. So that's basically gonna be this stuff, right? Yeah, so there's gonna be P and weight. That's definitely something that we need to add. Now there's a problem here. This R and D W and R and D S is something that we don't have yet. 
you have to uh, make those. Um, but let's let's think about more stuff. Uh, there is no angle stuff happening because the way we did the angle is here. That's where we did the angle. Yeah, so let's just do like something like this, spread P4, but I don't, I don't think it's P4 here, it's P5 here. So let's go P dot ang equal, uh, plus equals spread P5. Just want to make sure it's P5. Um, yeah, it's P5. The angle is P5. Now the R and DW and R and DS is something that we have to figure out. Yeah, I think we always need to do these, but let's just, just always do these. Uh, it's gonna add a little bit overhead on on the pattern generation, um, but it's gonna be worth it. So here the spread stuff. So we have R and D W and R and D S, and we're gonna drop into that's the weight, the spread of the weight, um, where the weight is P seven, and the S is speed, that's P six. Okay. I, at least I, th I think that's the way this works. Okay, so this is it. So we had 2718. Now we have 2749. So obviously a lot more, but now we can get rid of this. And now we have saved 17 tokens. It's not as much as I thought it would be. We had to copy a bunch of code uh, around after all, but it's still some significant saving. We c could get rid of one of the things. So let's see if this works. We haven't even checked if it works. Now we're not, not using any any burst yet, so that's that's fine. Um, spurred, oops. So let's see if this works. Uh, set, let's set it to mirror two. Um, hmm. Let's make ten of those bad boys. Yeah, it's a nice burst. Uh, it's always a random. It's always different different shot. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can vary the time. Yep. Let's make it really. Yeah, that's a nice burst. Yep. And let's see if we can maybe vary the speed a little bit. Yeah. So some of them are coming out way fast. <laughs> so now we can do burst using the spread, and that's kind of nice. Um, now I don't want to maybe the I want to maybe modify the UI here a little bit. Mirror. Let's not call it mirror. Let's call this type. Yeah, let's call it type. Um, I don't want burst anymore. That's Dunsies, no burst. Making sure that it's not, not breaking. Okay, so now I wanted to address another thing that is a little bit, uh, there is a bit of a problem that we sometimes get and that is sometimes we want to be able to modify the speed of a bullet without having to create a whole new pattern, right? This is something we're doing here with a pattern number five. Ah, so pattern number five has the source is one. The source pattern is one. This is this one. This is just like this bullet. This is what it looks like, right? It's a bullet that comes out at a speed of two. In pattern number five, we take that bullet and we modify the speed by zero by minus zero point five, and we just like duplicate that pattern. We use the spread modifier just to like to take that bullet and make a copy of that bullet, a single copy of that bullet. So just like make that bullet again but just make it a little bit slower. And we just create like this whole pattern just to make the bullet slower because some other subsequent pattern, this pattern here, uh, needs the bullets to come out, uh, like this pattern here. The, it needs the bullets to come out uh, slower because the enemy requires the bullets to be a bit slower. Uh, and it's kind of like this weird that we have to create a whole pattern just to make the bullet a little bit slower. Uh, and it would be nice if we had this built into the spread. Yeah, it would be good if we had like a speed shift uh, in the spread so we can say like, okay, uh, all of the bullets, move them speed-wise in one direction, make them all faster uh, or all slower and then do, do your spread stuff. Okay, so let's add another, I know it's already a really full spread pattern thing. It's already has a lot of functionality built into it, but we can add one more. Um, now the question becomes, because this is the part where we might break stuff, uh, so we need to be really careful. I mean, in the simple way of doing this would be just to add it as the last entry, and I just might do this. I just might, might do this because it will be the least breaking stuff uh, that we have, right? So let's, let's just do this. So we're going to make it, let's go zero, 
and then down here uh, we have the type and then we basically say um, shift or s speed let's call it speed plus <laughs> Whatever speed plus, so whatever is in that in that entry will just get every bullet gets that added to it, and if it's negative, then it gets lower, obviously. Um, or maybe we should do a multiply speed speed n. I think speed plus is better. Right. So now for all of the spreads, so what happens if I run this? Do, 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 does it break? It's not breaking. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for p in all uh, pets. Uh, if p1 equals sprd, then p uh, so that's entry number nine, I think, equals zero. So look at this. Let's, let's see if this works. Yep, there is speed plus, right? This is speed plus. This is this is now what we're adding to each. So we should be adding to each bullet. It's not working yet, uh, but we're gonna fix that now. Uh, I'm gonna keep this around. We haven't saved yet, so I'm gonna keep this around for now. Uh, let me do. Uh, let me go to the pet. Right. So now we have P9. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And then here when, is where we're doing the spread. So how are you doing this? Uh, this should also apply to burst, right? Yeah. 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 So we're gonna go make pet P dot S. SPD plus equal uh, P9. We could also roll this in, in here, in the burst, and here, but I want it to be affected by mirroring, right? Hmm. How, how many tokens is this? Four tokens. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Yeah, let's, let's try this. Yeah, that's the burst that we had previously. Is that, is that, does that belong, is, did we create a new pattern? Yeah, we created a new pattern from that. Okay, so this is our test pattern, right? So let, let's do speed to zero. So it's, and, and time to zero. And, and, and like angle to zero, it's just, so everything just comes in, in one, right? And it's just like one a single thing. Okay, so it comes like this. And then if we do speed minus one, then it's slower. If we do two, it's it's <laughs> or minus two, it's just, it just literally stays, uh, and then one is is faster. Okay, cool, good. So this works. So now we can do a lot of the a lot of the phenomena. We can do a lot easier. We don't need that many many patterns anymore. This pattern number five, for example, ah, we would, yeah, like this is minus zero point five. We could just now do with the speed plus. So we could apply it directly on 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 this level easy. Uh, now I want to make sure that these things um, are applied to the brain editor and uh, the um, couch map. So let me sh make sure that we have a pattern editor that actually, like we have this thing that actually uses these new things. So yeah, let's, this, this is the burst, right? So yeah, let's, let's make the burst happen. I, I want to have like a really clear, really slow bullet. If I make it, oops, not 21. Yeah, this now just stays, so let's go 1.5. Because I think the speed is, yeah, yeah, so now we have like three. Lee. And then uh, let's make it speed 0 0.2. Let's make it 0 0.5. So like this very slow, <laughs> very extremely slow spread. Okay, cool. So let's export this. Yeah. Right, so let's go to brain edit. So let's see. 
uh, we have like this enemy here. This is like our little test enemy. Let's do fire 10. Uh, let's do like a fire 11 here. By the way, we might want to wait a little bit. Oh, okay, whatever. Let's, let's be going to do that in a second. Okay, let's see if... Yeah, okay, we get that very slow shot, which is obviously slowed down. That's good. That's exactly what we wanted. Cool. So this works. Now bring it over to the couch map. Now the problem obviously is that we cannot actually test it now. I copied everything over, but we don't have enemies that do the new effects. Maybe I should, um, I mean, we have the skedits, right? Here, this guy, let's move this guy, boop, boop, like here. And then we're gonna give that guy um, the brain. What is the brain? Let's just give the final brain, the final brain. Okay, this like this, right? Okay, in couch map, let's see. Oh, oh, we don't have distance calculation in couch map. Yeah. Okay. Let's copy this over. Mm, there's some problem here. We don't have spread. <laughs> oh, oh, we uh, uh, unearthing problems that we <laughs> did not notice before. So there's like this function called spread. Uh, we copy this over from pad edit. Uh, we're gonna put everything into tools. Let's try this. Yeah, there is the enemy. How huh, interesting. It was moving sideways. Yeah, it's moving sideways. Weird, huh? Oh, that's because of scroll X and scroll Y. Yeah, but yeah, no, it makes sense because it depends on where you spawn the enemy. It will move to a fixed position in space. It doesn't matter where it spawns. It will always move to the same position. That makes sense. Okay, cool. I learned some stuff about this code myself. All right, so we did that pattern stuff. We did a lot of things. We did ground enemies with pattern stuff. There's one thing I want to write down for me later. I'm not going to do this today. Um, Wait oh, when when moving enemy. I think that makes sense to me. That we stop code execution, like we stop um, when we do like the move effect that we just had here, where the enemy is moving to a certain spot. That we don't do anything else. We just wait until the enemy gets there. I think that makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, maybe that's, that's something that we're going to do na next time around. For now, I want to move on to the part at the end of each episode when I say a big thank you and huge shout out. Thank you so much for supporting me on coffee.com. Thank you so much for all the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com, making this show possible. Now, this is not really a question. It's more of a discussion that came up in Discord that I want to kind of like this mention a little bit because I think this is cool. This one is from Eric B. And on Discord, he was playtesting his game uh, uh, Praxis Fighter X. And then um, there was a question of, you know, how to structure the entire game experience, which I think is probably the most interesting question to me, how to structure the game experience. And one thing that he mentioned in the discussion here, for example, is one thing I'm strongly considering adding is a continue system, maybe with four or so checkpoints throughout the level. Yeah, this is, this is a fascinating question to me. You know, how are we gonna package this game? This is something I also am thinking about all this time. Um, broadly speaking, I already I've had, I think, a video about this for, for the supporters, but broadly speaking, I don't think continues are a good idea. Um, I don't think, like, especially like infinite continues, I think are especially, especially bad. And a lot of shmups use infinite continues. The thing is like in arcade cabinets, continues were some, was something that was tied into putting a coin into the cabinet. So you had like a incentive not to use continues, right? So at some point you were like, oh, I don't know, I'm just pushing too far. But if continues are free, there is no reason not to just use continues. And then you get very quickly into this kind of like credit feeding mentality where you're just no longer like playing the game and trying to avoid the obstacles. You're just like brute forcing the game, basically. You're just like going through the game and just seeing how far you get and just like continuing, continuing, continuing. 
until you see the final screen, which is a way to experience the game, but it's not a great way to actually play the game. There's like a disconnect, there's the disengagement happening there where you're no longer trying to learn the patterns, the avoid the bullets and so forth. You're just going through, just like drinking from the fire hose of content and no longer really engaging with the game mechanics. And I'm really, I don't, uh, you, you see that every time a game comes out with infinite continues and there's like a reviewer who is not familiar with image maps and they just like credit feed through an entire game and they say like, it's a little bit too easy, you know, <laughs> or it's a little bit short, you know. It's like, yeah, sure, if you credit feed, it's easy and short. Yes, yes. But that's not the point. The point is to actually try to make, you know, try to actually avoid the obstacles, try to actually get through that. So I think um, introducing failure scenarios is a very important aspect of shmups, even if they are unpleasant. But the, the problem then becomes, okay, so if you have failure scenarios, if people can die, how do you keep them motivated? How do you keep them coming back? And I think one way to keep them coming back is to give them a feeling that, you know, every attempt makes some progress. Uh, with, for example, with a lot of roguelikes, they like this idea that, you know, every time you do an attempt, there's some kind of currency that you're collecting and you can spend that currency into a permanent upgrade. So next attempts are going to be easier for you. I don't think that's a good idea for shmups. I kind of like, I do not like that. I do not like this in roguelikes either. So I, I'm not sure if that, that's the way I would go. But I do like the idea of checkpoints. I think that's, that's smart. Uh, and that's something that I definitely want to maybe have where you would have checkpoints and once you reach a checkpoint that's saved basically and then you can always continue the game from that checkpoint or maybe even have something like a practice mode where you can like select a checkpoint from which you want to continue maybe you have to unlock them maybe you know i do like the idea of unlocking or being like okay you made it this far good job you know like giving the player the idea that they made it something they achieved something right but also i'm kind of second guessing myself there because like the, the continue stuff is kind of nice uh, the fact that you know you don't have to one CC learn the game that you kind of have can get further in a little bit, and I have to think about games like Zero Ranger where where it does have continues, they're just like not infinite. There there's a certain amount of continues, and you can as you play the game you can unlock more continues. I think that might be also a good idea to just have like okay there is a continue but there's just not infinite. There's maybe like three continues, right? And then once you play the game multiple times you will unlock a continue so then you automatically it doesn't matter how good you're at the, at the game basically at some point you will see more of the game so your players have this idea that they don't have to perform or here right they, they that if they just stay on it if, if they keep playing the game that eventually more stuff is coming automatically I think this is something that's very important for a lot of people who are not quite as confident in their skills as a schmupper like from my experience I know it is basically guaranteed that if you continue playing a game you get better at the game but as a newcomer who is not confident in your skills it doesn't feel like it it feels like you are uh, you know stuck so i think it's important sometimes to give players some kind of mechanism that assures that gives them the assurance that they that they cannot get stuck at the current state that some at some point there's going to be some kind of progress so that's one of those things that I'm constantly thinking about myself, how I want to do this in my game. So it's really fun and interesting to see what Eric B and other people are trying to figure out. I have to say, I do like the idea of checkpoints. I am not that hot about continues, but maybe. What do you guys think? All right, guys, so big episode today. A lot of stuff got done. Next episode, we're gonna, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do. We're probably gonna do like this little thing, this wait enemy thing. And maybe we're just gonna do a whole long episode where we implement all of the editor stuff. That would be fun. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.